Let's find out what the panel slider can do. This is the element pack add-on for Elementor and it can be used both in, in the free and the pro version. This is a different take on the slider and as you know every person who's doing an add-on for Elementor or any page builder tries to put their spin on it. So let's have a look at what this panel slider can do. Type in panel slider, grab the panel slider, drop the panel slider. And let's have a look first at what this thing is exactly doing here. There are, and if we go and look over here under sliders, one, two, three, four items in the slider. If I hover over an element, you will see that it gives me a title and it gives me read more, which is clickable, and then some content text there. And then, of course, we've got navigation here and we won't know what's going on because they all look more or less the same. Let's go then and add some content to these slides so we have a better idea of what's going on. So let's go to slide one and I'm going to grab these images and I'm doing that on purpose because I want to show you a little something something. Right. So let me first bring in those images and I have to remember which ones I'm choosing here. And no prices for anyone who can guess where all these are coming from. And I'm going to add one more. If you add one more, you have to remember there is no content in it. So you will have to go and put all those like uh, details like the slider and the content, those things in by yourself. Let's add one more image here. And then here we add random content. And then here at the bottom, we place a placeholder link. So we've got five slides now. And this doesn't look anything like the thing I showed you at the beginning. It's rather disappointing. And immediately you can feel frustrated because these things are just not shaped well and they look really, really bad. You have to get your head around the slider because once you do, this slider works very well. Let's work with images with different ratio settings for their sizes and this is what we've got here in front of us and i show you how you can deal with this and there's only a few ways you can deal with it and then i'll show you the second way how you can deal with it again it's going to do exactly the same as what i showed you at the beginning if you hover over it you will see there's a slide there's actually a button and some content text over here and you can do that for all of them let's go then under layout and let's have a look at here. You can change the slider height, but it's important you're not going to be able to stretch the images. There is no way in this widget to determine the focal point of the image or to stretch the image or to determine the image size. So you're going to have to choose your image, this one, for example, and reduce the height all the way until it gets there and then you've got a slider. Now, this is of course not ideal and that's why I told you I'll show you in my second example how you can do this better. But this is not bad. For example, if you go to selection of two columns, now you will be able to make your height and stretch it higher. If you click on your edit section and you make it full width and you also stretch it and you put in there no gap, then immediately when we go back, you understand we can make it even more higher, right? Okay. And what I like, it's, it's like a cutoff function. The only problem is, of course, you're not going to be able to determine which is the focal point within your image. The feature I want to show you immediately, what I like about this slider is click on slider settings and then you click here on center slide. And this works very well when you have only two images selected. Now you will have one and a half half on each side. And I like this because now whatever is your main idea is going to be here in the center every time and it will slide like this. You can see if I hover over it, the real image comes to life or rather the overlay disappears. So let's have a look at that. Um, let's go back to style and we can reduce the opacity, right? Or we can make it zero. And this is actually incorrect. Opacity at one means that it should not be see-through. This is incorrect. It should be actually 
opposite way around. But of course, you can see what I'm doing here. If you increase the opacity like this. What is strange to me, though, is that the titles do not display unless you hover over it. So that to me is a little bit strange. That's why I will just leave it like this. And then when I hover over it, you can see the title and the button that appears there. Let's go to button. And that is our button, this read more one here over. I had decided what I wanted to do with this is actually increase the size of the button. So I'm going to grab this and this is the problem I cannot see. Okay, read more. And then for border radius, I'm going to say solid, but uncheck the link values and I'm going to choose the bottom one and make it three and make it white. So now when I hover over it, you will see it has a line under my read more. I like that. That looks pretty good, right? And then you can play around with all these other settings for your title. You can change the color, topography, your text, the normal stuff. And then the navigation is your arrows over here. And you can change whether you have a dark or light. Let's put it on light in this instance. There you go. It's got light. Going back to content. Another interesting feature is this slide skew. Observe what happens when I apply this. Yeah, very interesting effect. You can add a little bit of skew there. The only downside is it cannot go to the left. I try dragging it down into the negatives. That doesn't work. So just remember, there you go. Let's see what happens with alignment. Alignment puts all my text in the middle, to the right, and justified. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I wonder why there will be justification in here. You can add a column space between your slides. There you go. I'm going to take that away. And you can also choose what to display, like your title or your button. This is all in your layout. Then your sliders, those are the ones that we added at the beginning. And then you can style your button here, add some text there if you want to. You can even add an icon uh, if you want it before or after. You see there's a little button now. Ah, that looks pretty nice. And then the slider settings I had shown you earlier. One feature they could add here is pause on hover. This is not here. You have your speed, you have your autoplay and animation speed. I would have liked to see a pause on hover for this element. Nicely done. This second example I want to show you is where I had gone and I had styled and I had sort of cropped all my images into the same ratio. So let's delete this one and start again from fresh with a panel slider. Drag it in. And let's close it. Let's go to sliders and slide one and click here on this one. Now, these five images that I have over here, if I click on them, you will see they are all at 450 at 1050, all of them. I had gone into my photo editing software and I styled them all at the same ratio, the same exact size. And this is going to help you to apply your panel slider much easier with far more control. So let's do that and you can have an idea of what is going on here. Slide three. Then and I'll add one more. I'm just going to duplicate this one. Good. And let's have a look at what happened. And this is where I've mentioned where the slider works very well. If you can come in with all your images at the same resolution, at the same size and the same ratio, it's going to speed up your workflow within your page builder. Of course, it means you'll have to do some work before the time, but don't be lazy. Come on, go and do it. And if you don't know how to do this in photo editing software, leave a message below and I'll give you a tutorial on that, even a free photo edit uh, software that you can use that I highly recommend. But at, let's have a look here. Uh, you know, when things are done well, I always just sit in reverie and think, oh, it looks nice. It looks nice. This is a very nice slider. And again, I'm going to do what I did with the previous one. I'm going to put the columns and I'm going to put it on two. And then for my slider settings, I'm going to set centered slide. And this is way, way too tall, right? But this is where I have it at the moment. So let's drag edit screen and make it full screen again. 
and then why did it change okay so it's still on two okay it's because bigger size so this is way way too big right you can see what i'm talking about here but you can always even drag this into a section so i'm going to copy this over here and then you can add it to a section let's see how that displays hmm hmm that's very interesting okay and go through it it's not playing let me see what we've got here sliders on this side sliders on this side are we divided put it on one ah there we go okay just too small let's delete this column and i'm playing around now ah, okay things are starting to look interesting now so you have to gauge you know what you are doing with this slider and how it displays and then i'm going to do the same thing here centered it is centered and my layout is at two let's see how it looks now okay all right so if you have some text over here and you want this slider to play over here very nice the main thing of course of a slider is that if you play it correctly you want people to click on this read more button here and then of course that will take them to a link another site a call to action and that is primarily the purpose of this slider and as you can see this slider is just way 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 too big Ugh, i hate that let's go back to box good right so a lot that you can do with this slider it's very nice but i will recommend before you bring in your images go and edit them get them the same ratio it will just speed it up and it will make it much easier for you once you bring it into elementor one point i want to raise again the wonderful thing about element pack by bd themes is that you can use it with elementor free there will be some like the dynamic content widgets that will not play along with the free version but there's a lot of it and there are so many widgets that will play with free which means that if you want to use it for you know and save some money this is a very good idea for you instead of buying elementor pro and upgrading all the time on the other hand if you are an elementor pro user like i am and you want to have full functionality of all the widgets go for elementor pro and then you will also have access to all those great other widgets that come with element pack that play very well with elementor pro this is Websites for Beginners with JP. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, please contact us. Let us know. It's always interesting to see how other people are using these elements on their websites.